Hey everyone, welcome back to Resto Ray. So I promised everybody a shop tour and I'm going to take you around uh, the yard and the shop, kind of where I have things staged and uh, this entire process of the 1957 Dodge Power Wagon restoration. The sun is going down, but uh, I think we got enough time. All right, so you probably seen in the introductory video, um, actually, I don't know if there's a picture of this, but yeah, there'll be something in the timeline, maybe photo for reference. But interestingly enough, so this is a 1956 frame, and I will now be actually putting this one back together as a second unit. Over the last um, 10 years, I've accumulated enough parts that I'm actually going to be able to put this back together. But what really made it kind of the critical piece that makes it feasible to put it back together is that I found a motor and transmission last year for it as a complete assembly in the drivetrain. So that was the missing link to this, um, this unit. So I'm going to get this back together. But if we walk over here, up here I've got a cab. And so this cab is original paint, original paint code, and what's neat about it is that, um, yeah, it was pretty much the original paint. Most of the time you see these cabs layered in multiple paint levels or layers, and uh, this one is the original paint, and yeah, it was pretty neat. So this is a 1957 cab. The 56 cab is identical, um, but I am restoring the 1957, but I am using a 56 cab. Um, you can kind of see right above over here, right above the windshield frame, I cut that out to scab a piece into the rotted piece of the 56, which was better suited for the restoration. So I've got that stage there, but this one here will end up on that frame there so that's coming so we will see hopefully maybe even um, before winter all right I've got some tires here and so these are the original uh, military tires that come with this truck but um, it's not what I'll be putting back on on the restoration and maybe I'll keep that a bit of a surprise on what's going to be actually going on to the resto. But if we come over here, I've got two shops, very fortunate to have it. This has kind of been my throw it in there, get it ready uh, kind of shop and it's where I do all my welding and fabrication. You'll see in some other videos um, where I'm actually fabricating or welding in here. Um, I even may have the video where I did a, the paint job on the frame where I had it on the rotisserie. So um, I'll post a link on this video if I could find it. So this here is a uh, Flathead 6 uh, Chrysler Industrial Engine. Uh, I haven't date coded it yet so I'm not too sure what the date is but I, knew, I do know that um, the transmission on it is a non-synchros transmission. So uh, in 57, they came out with the synchros transmission, so making it a little bit easier to shift. So we can see here, um, these are a bunch of parts that I got uh, when I bought this entire unit here. So I was really fortunate to find this because it really was a bit of a missing link to put the second one together. Now, just to be clear, the second one is not a full restoration. It's just so I could put the parts back together and then I'm gonna decide what I'm going to do with it. Okay, so this shelf here has a bunch of miscellaneous things. I've got, um, obviously, I've got some spare brake drums. I've got uh, a spare door. I've got the um, the outer uh, rings from the rims uh, that I had. These had been uh, sandblasted and painted. I've got, uh, these are the Tube liners that go on the rims. I've got some spare fenders, uh, you know, motor mount, um, all kinds of stuff here that I've been collecting. 
Back in here are actually my rims. Uh, if you can see those, and those were all uh, powder coated black. I, I did outsource those. Um, I do 95% of the work, but I did outsource those to a rim shop and they uh, powder coated those. Again, uh, spare pan here. I think I did a video on this, on the difference between the 56 and the 57 pan. This I've got off of eBay, brought this in from the States. So, you know, throughout 10 years, I've collected so many parts as I, they would come up either on eBay or I would find them. Um, I even found actually the original tailgate um, was just a Kijiji ad. So um, it's amazing where you can find the parts, um, estate sales and different things. So I've accumulated the parts as I've been working on this. Behind me is the cab that I'm restoring. Uh, and I was talking earlier about um, what I had done is I had stitched in the new uh, part of the kind of headliner piece here for the windshield frame. So the reason for that was this was so rotted out. And um, the reason why they get rotted, you can see inside there's actually, so that piece there is part of the headliner that comes up in there and the mice had gone in there and trapped um, just a bunch of wool and all kinds of debris and that debris got moisture on, on the headliner and of course it rusted through. So it was a weak point, so I stitched that in. I did this actually probably four or five years ago, maybe even six, so it's been sitting since. But like I said, this is the type of project that I've, you know, I, I didn't have a timeline. I knew it was going to take my, some time. Um, it's piled with a bit of junk in here right now, but, you know, I've got some of my spare sheet metal here um, that I'm using, and I'll be getting back on this probably this winter. So this is the rotisserie I built for it, and uh, it makes it really, really handy for flipping around, moving around. I've got it on casters. So I this is one of the first things I built uh, for it and weld it up as soon as I took it apart because I knew that if I didn't have a system in place to get organized with all of this, um, it wouldn't be as easy to, when I have time, to just hop in the shop and work on the project. So that was my intent, was to get everything in, organized in an order that I can work on it for an hour, half hour, I can work on it for 10 hours, whatever it may be that the time allows in between everything else and um, I can drop the tools and get back to it. So a little bit of organization in these restorations, uh, especially over, you know, when it's, you don't have the full-time dedication to do it, uh, certainly has helped. So, uh, so the parts are, they're, they're scattered, but they're, um, they're, they're, I know where they all are. Uh, some of the smaller parts I've, uh, I've had to uh, label and which I've done and because now I'm in the assembly stage. So uh, that's an exciting part. So I will take you over to the next shop and show you what's in there. All right, so coming in here. So this shop is actually heated and um, it um, allows me to work in the winter. And there's a lot going on in here because it's not just uh, the 57 restoration it's uh projects that i have going on with my son and daughter so we were always tinkering together and that's one of the things that i really love about well having started this youtube channel is being able to share with others what we're doing but most importantly for me is to pass on some of the skills and uh, things that i've learned in the discovery process of uh, making some that's something that's old and making it new again so that restoration project so Lots going on in here. I'll kind of give you an overview. And um, yeah, if you have any suggestions or comments or you want to post something, uh, please put them down below. So this is the axle. This is the front axle. So if you noticed on the uh, donor frame outside, this is the front axle for it. And I took this in the other night because I had to, yeah, I had to steal... Again, I had to steal a bolt off of this because I was missing one on the assembly over here. So I brought this in 
And this is another little carrier that I made uh, to wheel things around and make it easy. I mean, you're, these parts, you know, I'm fortunate to have a little bobcat that I can move this stuff around, but it's not, um, this stuff is not light. I mean, these trucks were built to last. I mean, they were military spec, right? So um, it, it's heavy. So having devices and systems in place where I can easily move it and, you know, because I'm mostly on my own when I am working on it, um, the majority of the time anyway, so yeah. Um, so starting over here, uh, obviously I've got lots going on there, but there are a bunch of parts up here. And so over here, um, this is the insides of the door and the glass, uh, the frames. And I shot a video on that process and took a bunch of pictures for my own memory to uh, remember what I was doing. So those there are the uh, gas tank straps. There is the PTO shaft for um, the uh, winch and for the Braden winch over here. I've got uh, I've got the manifold assembly that was machined, so that's ready to go. Um, these are my uh, rings for the finished uh, rims that I was showing you. Um, those are those were powder coated and finished. Um, here I've got um, some shocks, uh, the front and rear shocks for the unit. I've got another uh, pan there. Um, got some miscellaneous parts over here. I have some of the new wheel nuts that I was saving. So um, throttle linkage that mounts to the bell housing. That was all restored. So I know where everything is. It's been placed throughout. Um, again, I've got, I've got more tubes here and uh, I've actually had this stuff staged because I'm getting ready to look at uh, assembling a set of tires because the my goal is to get a rolling chassis going. So um, what else? Yeah, up here I've got a bunch of miscellaneous parts. Another set of fenders up here. I've got the front and rear fenders. And what's really neat about this restoration is I do have the original box and uh, I'll show you the tailgate that I found that I didn't get with the truck. But those are the seat springs. Um, over here, I don't know if you can see, uh, I believe that's the um, inner door cover of the driver's side with all the data plate information there. So, I talk about that in the last video that I did. Um, here's some original turn signals. Actually, these are not original. These were an aftermarket option from uh, Dodge, uh, but these are really neat. So these are dual sided. Um, let's see what else. I got front fender uh, brackets. Literally the entire truck is sitting here. It's hard to believe, um, but in here, as well, I've got everything labeled when I took things apart. So for example, what do we have here? This is the rear hardware for gas tank cross members, uh, angle iron, brake line support. So that's that hardware there. And uh, here's another miscellaneous light. Again, stuff that I've collected um, in here. Oh yes, this was, miss well, not missing on my truck. I actually broke it. <laughs> and so this is the uh, cab light. And I broke mine because I dropped it. And I ended up finding one on eBay, I think at the time, maybe eight or nine years ago uh, for about 20 bucks. So that's on there. Still in the original box that it shipped from. So, um... What else? Uh, here's the horn assembly that I've taken apart and started that restoration. So oftentimes I'm, so, so I got friends who ask me like, well, why, why aren't you just sticking to one thing and not um, finishing something completely? It's not that I don't want to finish it. It's either that I'm missing a part or I'm in between something. And so 
to keep busy and to continue taking small steps every day towards accomplishing this goal, I'm, uh, I'm bouncing between things while I wait for parts. Cause sometimes I don't have the parts or, you know, I have to detail a certain part. I may need to powder coat, um, paint. So I'm actually doing that in stages. Um, like when I powder coat, I want to powder coat a bunch of parts at the same time. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm more efficient at it. So that's, that's the reason uh, for not completely finishing something. So over here, I've got the, so I've got two winches. So I've got the original winch from the 57 here. And I forget, these are all stamped by the way. So any of you power wagons, um, gearheads like me, um, I don't know if you can see it here, but this is where they're stamped. And I've got this one here. This is painted over as well, so. But the the year, maybe it's, yeah, This the year is stamped into the, the winch. Um, I've got the clutch plate here uh, that was all rebuilt. I had this rebuilt years ago and had it wrapped up and looks like the surface rust has been, um, hasn't taken to it, so which is good. And I'm getting ready to put that back in. This is happening. Uh, flywheel here so that's going in underneath here i have the other uh, front cowling assembly for the radiator um pto so all the parts are here this needs to be assembled again i've got all the pto parts in there um this is neat i picked this up at a snowmobile swap uh, for about five bucks um, this was not an original piece to the truck, but they did sell them as an accessory. And, um, you know, this is what the uh, police cars have and uh, what some of the trucks have had at that time. And uh, service trucks. So I'm not too sure whether I'm going to put that on. But, yeah, everything is literally here. So um, here's some stuff that was I uh, fabbed up years ago for the floor pan in the cab. That will go back together. And uh, I even got a power steering kit. So the truck is getting... Uh, the 50, 1957 was the first year option where they had power assist. But correct me if I'm wrong if it was not 57. Maybe it was 56. But nonetheless, um, this didn't have the power assist kit on it. But I am putting a power steering kit on it. So... Um, it's going to make it much more enjoyable to drive and, um, still remaining a purist to it because it was an option. Now the truck didn't have it, but, um, with the new tires and things that I'm putting on, I wanted to get, uh, some more efficient steering. Um, over here, got my compressor station and I've got a, uh, I've got a, um, I've got the lines acting as an air dryer to cool the air. And then I've got it coming through a uh, first stage filter, a uh, second stage, and then uh, my final stage when, I, um, when I'm painting or even sandblasting or anything like that. But what I wanted to show you, here's the original radiator. I had it record and I hung it up there uh, four and a half years ago. And the key when you're storing these is to make sure that you're, you fill them up. So I filled it up with um, antifreeze because uh, it has the corrosion inhibitors and I didn't want anything deteriorating. So I filled it up and uh, it's been holding ever since. If you're asking how I'm holding the fluid in there, I uh, put a plug in from uh, one of the plumbing wholesalers. So yeah, so, and yeah, so you can see my son and I are rebuilding a Honda lawnmower. I've got the uh, 1972 XS Yamaha 650 for any of you bike guys. Um, that's a project, but I haven't really started anything on that. But on the truck itself, um, it's in assembly mode right now. And uh, I've got my parts all laid out, my little tray that I move around when I'm assembling. Just received a bunch of parts here, so I'll be getting ready to uh, go through some of those little goodies that I found. And uh, 
some parts here that I uh, painted and got ready. These parts, for example, I was doing some sandblasting and had a little bit of extra time. So um, these are part of the, uh, this is actually part of the, uh, the bell housing. And uh, that's been powder coated. And then it's been coated with that phosphate that I've talked about. I coat all my metal with phosphate. It's the best base to give you before you epoxy or paint and or powder coat. It adheres really, really well and you just get a superior finish. So every part on this truck has been uh, phosphate coated, any metal parts before I paint them. And also for preservations, because things sit around for so long, um, you know, you don't want things flash rusting, especially as you're working in stages. So lots of uh, new parts here over the years, um, you know, brake lines and things of that nature. Here's all my um, cylinders or, uh, for the... Um, for the brakes, uh, I've got my main drive pulley. This is an NOS part. Mine was a bit damaged, um, so I've got a new one here. All bearings, every, you know, this is a nut and bolt resto, so everything has been taken apart. I got my ignition system, my kit here. Um, I've got rad hoses here that have been sitting here. Um, what else? Ignition wires. Um, uh, some bearing parts in here, uh, for example, what do we got? Yeah, these are bearing parts, and oh yeah, this is a poly slide. I installed this poly slide um, in between all of the lease springs. So, I don't know if you can see there, maybe the contrast between the lease spring and the poly slide. And I installed that in between so that I don't get that squeaking noise. Uh, with the um, the springs, though I doubt with this spring pack it's even gonna barely move. So they um, it definitely did raise the um, the spring thickness. So I was concerned. Like I do have there's a bit of, there, like those these ended up just fitting on the leaf spring. So we'll see what happens as things compress. Um, Technically, this will lengthen out and will create some room there. So that one there has a little bit more room. But anyhow, just a little tidbit of information. Um, so again, so I got my brake drums ready. I've got my hubs ready. So everything's here. Of course, the power plant. This has been all rebuilt and this is ready to go. So I've had that done for a couple, uh, for what, a year and a half now. Uh, I've got some more parts over here. Another set of rims um, that are done and ready and epoxy painted. These ones I didn't powder coat, these were epoxy painted. Um, so a bunch of parts here. Um, I think you'll probably see a photo. When I bought the, when I bought the 56, it was really neat because that's where I got the box from. And the 56 had like an old toolbox um, in the back, not like one of these fancy Delta boxes, but just an old toolbox and it was like loaded with parts. Unfortunately, the parts were all rusty, but really good to go through and, you know, I salvaged a few things. I don't even know if they, they work, but you know, here's an old oil pump, you know, this could act as a core and it could be rebuilt. Um, yeah. So here's a bunch of parts here that are ready that have been painted and part of the assembly. So I'm always, I'm always trying to think of my next step and getting things ready in advance so that when it comes to the assembly, which I'm doing right now, um, it's a lot easier. All right, so this is the um, trans, um, transfer case and I've got the uh, transmission. So I rebuilt these six years ago. They've been sitting for a while now. I, uh, I turn them once in a while. I've got oil, a uh, little light oil in them. And, uh, but we're, we're, we're close here. We are maybe, um, a month or a month and a half away from getting this stuff installed. So for example, here's a piece, um, you know, I've got a little bit of work to do on this brake. Um, this is the emergency brake, but I had this brake, uh, emergency brake relined. So by a shop and, uh, that's all ready to go. So I've got to paint this as well. Um, I'm gonna actually be painting this the original, uh, this kind of rust-oleum orange color. 
And uh, so that's very, very close to getting to that stage. Um, same thing with the transmission. Um, you can see the red, uh, the red coating. Um, that's, um, that's a special product that I use to um, coat the inside because casting is very porous. Um, and, uh, you know, I had not rebuilt an old transmission like this before I'd done this, um, but it was an interesting, interesting process and uh, it's done. You can see I've got some surface rust there on that seal surface, but um, yeah, replaced a lot of, lot of parts on inside here because it had been corroded because it had been sitting. So luckily I could find some gears actually under here. Um, in this box, you can see there's a um, bunch of old races and bearings and that's all from the transmission and the transfer case. So I've kept all that. Uh, just to demonstrate that the rebuild was completely done and it was done properly and anything that needed to be replaced was replaced. So, oh, here's the original tailgate in really good shape. It's got some surface rust, but um, yeah, that's going to finish off the truck nicely and uh, makes for a nice uh, conversation piece up there right now anyways. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I had no major specialty tools, but I've got um, everything I need and I usually buy what I need uh, as, I, uh, as I'm building or as I find something that, uh, um, that would add some value as a tool. Um, one thing I'm looking to add to the shop is a bigger press. I go to the neighbors when I need a big press, but uh, right now I got a little, like a little bench, uh, bench press that I use for bearings and setting things like that. So that's been one, you know, wash tank and sort of things like that. So, um, that's the pretty much overall tour of the shop. And, uh, so hopefully you found it interesting. Maybe if you got any comments, suggestions, you know, post them below and, uh, I will see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching. See you soon.